I, I want you uh, I want you to see um, um, what our current stack looks like. Uh, and again, uh, we went from uh, you know PHP to Ruby on Rails, and now we ended up on this new thing. Um, and this new thing is essentially uh, ACA based uh, non-blocking I/O framework. You may ask yourself, why the hell ACA? And why Java? There are so many other sexier technologies out there, like Node.js and Go and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, the answer to that is very simple. And when you're picking your stack, uh, you need to focus not only what's sexy and, and uh, what's performant, you also need to focus on what, what is the pool of engineers that you can actually hire from. Do you have enough critical mass in the community to be able to support um, to support hiring from, from that pool? So let's say uh, you know two years ago, if we were to go with Node, did I have enough Node engineers that worked at this scale? Maybe at LinkedIn, maybe at Facebook, some other places. But the reality is, as a small startup of 20 people, could I steal these engineers? Hell no, right? So. So what we decided to do is we, w we wanted to go with a technology that we knew could be scaled. It was deployed in an enterprise systems many, many times, uh, and maybe augmented it with some technologies that, that would kind of make it better. So that's why we chose Java. Uh, we chose Akka because of the non-blocking I.O. nature of Akka. Um, so what that allows us to do is essentially we can do massive parallel processing. I can split. Uh, incoming RESTful uh, API call into multiple processing pipelines that then uh, execute asynchronously in a cluster and they all come together to form the response, right? Um, now, um, we're using standard Jersey to model our RESTful APIs. We're using Cloudflare as our content delivery network. Uh, so Cloudflare, um, uh, we used to be uh, on Akamai, we switched away from Akamai uh, because of pricing, Cloudflare offered us uh, much better pricing, but also they have uh, a very interesting um, security solutions uh, in addition to their offering that's kind of for free. If I were to be on, on uh, Akamai, I would have to pay for all that stuff. Uh, so so one, thing, one thing that you see, uh, we are very nimble and, and we are not afraid to switch technologies and play around with different things. Uh, you know, we could switch Cloudflare next year to something else if, if we can, right? They're, they're key to do this right, but I'm going to talk about team structure, uh, how you can enable that sort of innovation and, and how you can move quickly. Um, and then you have a whole bunch of, you have this actor system, uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, there's some cross-cutting concerns that, that we're using. All this stuff running is running in the Elastic Beanstalk on Amazon, so Elastic Beanstalk is managing uh, all the deployments and management, auto scaling, all that type of stuff. Um, to be honest, we are probably at the end of uh, what Elastic Bean stuff can do for us. Uh, we are actually looking at some other technologies. We will probably be dockerizing our system and actually taking the management of, and, and of the clusters ourselves. The primary reason for that is because our deployments are excruciating long. Uh, one thing about Elastic Beanstalk is if you want to use that platform and deploy, it just takes hours to propagate, right? We, we can't have that. Uh, and then we're using Zookeeper to manage configuration. Um, that was probably a big mistake on my part to actually uh, approve that. Uh, we're looking at a whole bunch of different things. Zookeeper, uh, if I were to compare Zookeeper to let's say something like console.io, um, Zookeeper is like ancient, ancient stuff. Um, Console uh, is a much better configuration system uh, that we will probably switch towards. I will also use something called Vault that allows me to separate things like username, passwords, and keep it in one secure storage. Then have my configuration templates in console.io, key value name, pairs, also stored in the repository so you have full audit. And then you have these deployment pipelines that kind of merge your <coughs> template, key value pairs, full values from the Vault, and the deployment to, to a particular environment. So, so that the, the swapping this is going to probably happen in the next three months. Um, and then, and then let's talk about our partners. Um, 
So I, I love talking about this stuff because um, you, you know, one challenge that I faced when I joined Grindr, um, I was like, okay, we've got four guys, no problem. You know, we've got money, we're gonna hire 20 people in, in three months, no problem, right? Three months later, I'm sitting there, we still haven't hired anybody, uh, and I still have to do all this stuff, right? Uh, the reality is there is such a huge competition for your talent in the industry uh, that uh, you know companies like mine, uh, small startups, really need to be very creative uh, about how to enable their team without having 100 people doing it. And, and the answer for us was to really find vendors that do things like infrastructure as a service, software as a service, to extend my engineering department. So what I did was I said, okay, I need a high throughput uh, caching cluster using Redis. So we partner with Redis Labs. Um, Redis Labs has probably been the most stable infrastructure piece. Uh, it is a massive cluster that is actually processing half a million ops per second. Uh, and, and it has not gone, gone down since June last year, right? So they manage it, they set it up, they constantly tweak it to achieve uh, maximum performance. Even at 300,000 to half a million, million ops per second, I still get one millisecond, two millisecond response time from, from that thing, which is absolutely crazy, right? So yay for Redis and yay for Redis Labs. Um, I'm not their spokesman. I'm just happy that they helped us. Um, and, and there are a couple of other stories like that. So, so uh, obviously we're using Amazon. Uh, Amazon a lot, has a lot of tools that can enable you. Uh, the problem with Amazon is that once you start processing at scale, uh, these costs can add up very quickly. And also some of their appliances are really, really geared towards uh, small to mid market, right? Uh, you will not be able to take their Elasticsearch cluster and scale it to, to this level, right? Um, now, as an enterprise cluster, a customer, they may work with you and, 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 and maybe do it for you, uh, but it's not going to out of the box, right? Um, so for messaging, you know, we, we had a choice to go with, uh, with uh, uh, SQS, SNS. Uh, we decided to stick with, uh, with uh, uh, RabbitMQ. Uh, I personally really love Erlang. Erlang is a massively uh, scalable and concurrent platform. Uh, we actually use it in other places as well. So RabbitMQ is this queuing uh, pops up um, platform that is Erlang based. But do I want to scale and, and, and build that cluster myself? Of course not. I can't afford to hire two, three experts and, and have them on, the, on my team and then make sure that they stick around, right? Uh, so what we did, we found a company that actually specializes in uh, enterprise-grade, highly scalable uh, RabbitMQ cluster, and we partner with Cloud MQP, right? So Cloud MQP, we have VPC gearing between those guys, and problem solved. And and I can go down the line. Um, the, another one that I want to talk about is is big data. What, one of the one of the things that blew my mind when I joined was there was really no big data infrastructure. And the reality is that for, for our company, all the advanced features have to be driven by data science, right? Uh, simple matching, looking up someone based on their age or whatever, that's not very sexy in that everyone does it, right? What's sexy is I want my platform to learn, based on your behavior, who to show to you, right? Or I want my platform to allow you to discover places around you. And in order to do that, you need to have data science team, you need to have infrastructure in place to essentially be able to ingest massive amounts of data, both from your clients and your server infrastructure, store it in one place in a secure way using some sort of data lake technology. And in order to do that, you would have to create another team and then you know attract these guys and, and make sure that they stick around and all that stuff. So we partner with Treasure Data. I don't know how familiar you are with FluentD plugin. Uh, anybody used FluentD before? No? FluentD is, is kind of de facto standard on, on sending, uh, of streaming massive amounts of data from your infrastructure to file or some other system. So the same guys to, who actually wrote FluentD and open sourced it, they also started a company, and they're all Japanese by the way. Um, they started a company, Treasure Data, 
And what they provided us is, is very robust uh, big data, uh, data lake infrastructure uh, that allows me now to, to drop their SDK in my client, capture uh, raw facts from my client, through FluentD send a lot of data from my server side to their infrastructure, and now, and now I have everything in place and I can, my, I can have my data scientist using that infrastructure to mine for data, export that data for faster processing using vertical or something else. Uh, but the bottom line is, without this piece in place, I will be still sitting there figuring out how to send all this data into S3, right? And, and you cannot move slow, right? As a smaller company, you need to be very inventive, form those partnerships. A um, couple of other, it's a NoSQL thing, so um, DynamoDB, we're using Dynamo. Uh, used to be a very big fan of Dynamo. Not anymore, you can talk to me afterwards. Uh, but um, very, very good technology. Uh, once you get to certain scale, uh, it, 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 the, the way it shards and allocates reads and writes to those shards could be problematic. It could be very, very costly. Uh, we, we, we are using Mongo. We used to use, we're still using MongoDB. We used to use MongoDB power to power our geospatial search. Uh, we're not using that anymore. Uh, MongoDB is very difficult to scale. If there are any problems with the, with the cluster, it's not easy to reshard and recover. Um, uh, so we switched that technology. We're actually using Elasticsearch. So Elasticsearch is the technology now that allows us to process 10,000 uh, uh, you know, geospatial offs uh, per second. Um, and um, you know, we, we didn't do it ourselves. We partnered with, uh, with uh, a lot of different people who helped us configure it right, and it's more art than science. You need to figure out uh, which nodes are gonna be receiving data and routing data, which nodes are gonna be holding data, which nodes are gonna actually be executing queries, and you have to have the right mix, and then you have to have the right mix of hardware. It, it's, it was a journey to get there, but, uh, but all said and done, uh, I really like Elasticsearch technology. That's what's powering us now. Um, and uh, you know, usual SACSPES, perfect trail, data dog for visualization and, and monitoring of all this thing. So, so that's the stack. Um, again, no blocking IO, uh, pick a technology that uh, you can actually hire people who have done large enterprise grade deployments who actually have experience. You, you don't want to be in a place where you, know, you hire someone and they're experimenting for the first time. Because the moment you go to production and you apply some load, there's going to be a lot of aha moments and there's gonna be CEO standing behind you. And you're like, where's my stuff down, right? That's, that's not a good situation. Uh, and then I would say, you know, partner with as many companies as possible. There's, there's a very rich ec ecosystem of infrastructure as code or software as, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, infrastructure as a service and software as a ser service uh, companies out there that can help you enable 